we're going to do is we're going to troubleshoot uh, Andrew's code. Uh, from the experience that I had on Tuesday, uh, what day, Monday, um, I think you folks have the idea right of what you need to do. All right, you know that you know that, that you can use the media queries to apply different style sheets. You, you know, you might have to work on the syntax, but you got that down. What's really proving to be problematic, I think, is the actual uh, getting the mobile site and the desktop site to work using the fluid layouts. So that's what seems to me to be the problem. And um, this will be a good example to review that on and to go over this in a little more detail. Um, so Andrew sent me um, a couple examples he was working with and he got it working where one, the desktop looked good and the mobile didn't look good, one, the mobile looked good, but the desktop didn't look good. So we'll spend at least a little bit of time before we go into our next topic. And again, we'll, we'll see how long this takes, but we'll, we'll spend a little bit of time going into this and um, then we'll go in and, and uh, start our next topic. So let's start out with one of these. Things. You want to get the light? Which folder would be best for me to start with? Andrew? Um, the one that's called copy or the one that's called? The, um, the not copy one. Okay, so just the plain. Yeah. All right. And what page is the best page for me to look at? Um, and any of them besides? Okay, so look at the mobile first one. Yeah, that's fine. All right. All right. Is that how it should look in the mobile and desktop? The desktop, yes. The mobile, it's um, not a mobile version. Okay. Let's let's go in and what uh, emulator did you use? Uh, I always use the Epic. I mean, Evo 4G. Evo 4G? Or is it the Epic 4G? It's one of those two. Is there uh, any preference you have for the different emulator choices? I have it. I would see that. I would use the, I would use the lower lowest common denominator. You know, use you know definitely make it work on a on a, a, a small one. Okay. I was kind of bouncing all over yeah. just to. Well, we'll start from there. All right. I'm not really sure why it isn't uh, why it isn't kicking into the mobile version. Let's go with this guy. All right. Not sure. Well, that'll be something we'll troubleshoot then. style sheets, a handheld and a screen. Um, the handheld one kicks in if the screen is um, maximum device width of 480 or smaller and is a screen or a handheld. All right. First of all, anything wrong with these style sheet rules?
anything not look right with those two style sheets. What about it? Can you use handheld? Yeah, you can say handheld. And only screen, yeah. Um, again, th this is this is where, this being an, uh, an imperfect world, um, some mobile browsers identify themselves as being handheld, some identify as being a screen, and that's why this is saying essentially, if it identifies itself as handheld, or it identifies itself as a screen and maximum device width, is, is 480. I'll tell you what looks wrong with this to me is that these don't look in the right order to me. All right? Because this one is kind of following the example that we did the first uh, session of class. So the, 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 we, we did two distinct styles. We did sort of the, the graceful degradation style, then we did the progressive enhancement. And in this case, the idea is, is you have a style for everything, that's the screen, and then you have a style for just handheld, all right? Which implies to me that what you want to do is apply this for all screens and then override it selectively with the things that are in the handheld. Because the way this is uh, organized now, if you have multiple rules that apply to the same element, the last one's going to win. So the one in this is going to win. All right? So let's go and switch those around and see what happens. So let's save that. And as you can imagine, desktop version doesn't look any different, right? Because, again, this style sheet gets applied and this one doesn't. But now, on the mobile, it should look different because this style sheet will get applied and this one will too. So anything that we put in this one will supersede anything that we've put in that one. So let's go in here and click refresh. Ah, and there we go. All right. Now, that looks pretty good, right? That, that is a mobile version, and I might quibble a little bit about the font size or whatever, but basically, that's flowing the way that you want it to, all right? So, the lesson for this is it's important to realize, again, the way these cast the way these cascading style sheets cascade. Now, there's a lot of different ways that they cascade. But one way is, if you apply two style sheets, the last one wins. The last one overwrites it. So, in this case, you want, because you're using sort of the strategy of the uh, um, um, uh, graceful degradation, you want this to apply to everything and then override it for the handhelds. All right? So, by switching it around. Now... Do we, do, do we want to do anything to the mobile one? Not necessarily. We might want to tweak up, make, make text a little bigger or, or whatever. Do we want to do anything to the desktop version? What do we think of the desktop version? Not bad. I, I don't remember if it was this folder or the other folder in the, um, mm -hmm. that I sent, but... Well, we'll look at the other one next. But it's supposed to like be a certain size which would make it so the three links right there are vertical instead of one being... Okay. Okay. Well, these three links. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's make it so that... Let's go and change this so that these links are stacked vertically and this is maybe a little tighter in on that. All right. Let's go and let's look at, at what we can do to that style sheet. So let's take a look at our HTML. Now, you've done a really good job of, um, how do I want to say, of, of keeping your HTML semantic, all right? There's nothing about the appearance in any of this, all right? All there is is 
the HTML tags that say the content. So that's great. That's a good first step. And everyone's been doing great on that. Let's look at what we want to do. And what we said we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure these links are stacked vertically all the way down. And we want to push that over a little bit. So that would be in the screen style sheet. And let's go and let's edit that. And all right, you did the bit of the mobile is hidden. Um, navigation. All right. Width of 85%. Oh, that's. Yeah, you, you would want the, uh, the links. That's not, that's this, links. Okay, yeah, links. gotcha. So, links width of 35.35%. I got to think you typoed that, either that or you I, really I put, wanted it precisely. I put it in the calculator okay. and came up with that. So. Okay, all right, fair enough. And you're putting a ton of padding on this uh, in, inside the paragraphs, all right? I, I did the padding because... Um, It was something with the layout, um, everything fitting together. Okay. Let's start out by, let, let's... Or no, oh, that was because, so it was centered, so it wasn't right under the picture, and so it wasn't directly right above the, um, the footer. Okay. Let's get rid of this. All right. And let's see what we got. All right. There they're stacked vertically now. Mm -hmm. All right. And how did we want to move them? You want to move them over that way? Uh, just um, up and down to have some space between each link. Okay. All right. See, to have some up, uh, up and down the space between each link. Yeah. All right. Um, well, let's try this. Let's go in and let's put... Um, Let's try that. All right. So now, all right, you're floating it to the left. All right. Remember, these you don't want to float to the left, right, because that will try to put paragraphs alongside of each other. All right. You don't want to float to the left if you want the paragraphs to be stacked like actual paragraphs. So let's get rid of the float and see what that does. I did the wrong one. Thanks. Yeah. We do want to float that. So let's take that one out. There we go. All right. So they're stuck. They're they're vertically. There's a little bit of space between them. We could play with that if we wanted to. If we want to put more vertical space, we could give you know 40. Um, one thing is is I typically would put padding on one and not the other because that kind of muddies the water and makes it confusing. All right. Oh, uh, between the uh, up and down padding? Yeah, I wouldn't put padding on the top and padding on the bottom. I just put because the padding of one's top is the other's bottom and so on. Okay. All right. Um, if we wanted to push that over a little bit, I could say a margin of 15 pixels, let's say, or a margin left of 15 pixels. I thought that was one thing you had mentioned you wanted the, the, the link shoved over a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I didn't notice that shoved them over a bit or not. Uh, margin left. Alright, that 
I've shoved them over a little bit. Now I want to push this back that way. All right. What I do a lot of times with this is I will give things background colors um, to see exactly where everything is. So I'll say a background of red here and a background of yellow here. And you notice we that's there, that's there. Now, that one's floated to the right. Okay. I'm going to change that to float it to the left. Get rid of those background colors. And float left. And now... That looks better to me, and you could tighten it up a little bit more, or maybe move the logo over a little bit so the logo was kind of like a banner over top of it, yeah. and so on. All right. Let's make sure we didn't break the mobile. All right. So I'll go here, click that, and I don't think we broke the mobile. If we did is because we have a style rule in here that's not overridden in our mobile style sheet. Okay. Alright, so you could just put a style in there. Let's look at the other one then. Alright, uh, there's a second example. Now the good news and bad news is the good news is I'm helping troubleshoot. We're using it as an example so you're getting good assistance. The bad news is I'm not going to give you a copy of the final product. So you have to go back and, 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 and remember and repeat the steps for this. Okay. All right. What page do we want to look at here? Same thing? Um, the responsive web design one. This, in, inside this folder? Yeah. Okay. And then the web page. Web page? Okay. And then we want to look at that in the handheld. Oops. All right. I really like this layout right here. Okay, so you, so this is fine. So you like this layout, but this one you don't like. Okay. Um, so let's look at both of the style sheets that we used uh, in this. So let's let me close out a Notepad plus plus, get rid of all this, and then I'll open up the web page, the screen. and the handheld style sheet. Okay. All right. HTML. All right, here we go. One thing I did not notice, and you had this in the other one, I noticed it like right at the very end, but I didn't mention it. I would not necessarily put these in paragraphs, because that's not really a paragraph of text. Uh, again, that's not really 100% good semantically, so you're 99% good semantically. I would instead use an unordered list, because that's what this is. It's, that isn't a paragraph, that's a list of links. Okay. All right. Now again, remember with the unordered list, you can, you can choose to orient it horizontally or vertically. All right. So let's go in and let's make, let's follow my suggestion and make this an unordered list. Then I'll make these LIs. And let's 
let's see if we broke the mobile version. Because I'll bet we did. Alright, now those are stacked vertically. Alright, and they have the dots next to it, which isn't very good. Alright, so let's go and look at, at what we can do. Alright, again, this is using the philosophy of the progressive enhancement. In other words, but in this case you have the style sheets in the correct order. You have the one that applies to everything first, then you have the one that applies to the handheld. All right, um, and what we can do here is the links li, we can make the display of that not a block but an inline. And we can say that within the link section, the UL gets list style type none. So if we go and save this now, we're back to where they were before. All right, they're oriented horizontally. We could put a little padding on it if we wanted to, or a margin. wanted to space those out a bit. All right. But they don't look like bullet points now. All right. Semantically, that's a better way because they're not really paragraphs. They're, they're items in a list. And remember, through our CSS, we can style it however we want to. We can, we can get rid of the bullet points. We can have it oriented horizontally instead of vertically. So I will agree. This is a, this is a decent looking mobile design. Let's look at the desktop one then. And see what we can do. Um, but the, the picture on the, on the mobile. Uh -huh. um, uh, does it, that need to be altered in terms of percentage, or elastic in order to? not just stay tiny, but to fill all the way to the right? Um, well, it depends. Do you want the image to fill all the way to the to the side? Probably, but okay. when I well, was doing that, it wasn't my intention. Okay. Well, let's go and, let's go and do that then. All right. Um, because they talked about doing that, and they talked about using relative sizes, that doesn't mean that, uh, and you're doing like a uh, width of 100%, that's if you want the width to be 100%. Uh, let's look and see what this is on this web page. Inside the div of picture, we would want that to be, image be a width of 100%. So let's go into the style sheet and say, picture image with 100%. And that'll be 100% of the available space. So now the image goes across like that. Okay. Now let's look at the desktop. Um, oh, go ahead. Um, I was just trying to get a handle on that we have the, the picture div, and then we have the picture image. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I, I guess I'm trying to figure out how they collectively work together, because obviously the one by its lonesome wasn't doing the 95% that he had. Okay. Um, I guess like I said, I'm just trying to connect the okay. dots as to how one trumps the other. Well, it's not a matter of trumping. It's a matter of... Um, specifying a width or not specifying a width. All right. Let's see how big this image is. Um, let's see how big it is 
Let's go in and edit it. This image is is a 364 by 221 image. All right. We've made it 320 going across. All right. Now, remember the way any web design works. All right. The way any web design works is things get their appearance based on two factors. Those two factors being what you specify via your CSS and what the browser wants to do. Okay? So, let's consider what we have here. Here we add a div with an ID of picture. And that contained an image. Alright, so that's what we have. Originally, we had a style rule that says that the picture has a width of 95% and change. So, what is that 95% of? It's 95% of the container. All right, whatever this is contained within. What is this contained within? This was contained within the body of the page, right? So, in other words, this is saying that that picture div goes all the way across the page. All right? Because the width was set at virtually 100%. So, round off 100%. Originally, how big did the image, how big did we make the image? We didn't. So, what does that mean? If you don't, who does? The browser. The browser decide how big to make it. I thought, yeah, that's pretty good. We'll make it that big. Unless there's something in the screen CSS. That's the other possibility, because you actually have two CSSs. No, there's nothing in there either. All right. So, it made it however big it wanted to. So, it made it that big. All right. I couldn't tell you exactly how it decided to make it that big, but it did. All right. Now, when I went in and I put this style rule, picture image, width of 100%, what does it get? It gets 100% of its available space. Now, keep in mind, in this case, the image is the only thing in that div. But it wouldn't have to be, right? There could be three images in there. All right? You could have three images in this div. All right? But if I say the width is 100%, it's going to take 100% of its available space. And therefore, it's going to virtually now fill up the screen. All right? So that's why, it, that's why it didn't fill up the screen before. It did fill up the screen before because we didn't give a width for that, so the browser decided how big to make it. Here, we've given a width of 100% of the available space, so it will make it match the size of the div. So the picture image one is the size of how big the image is? How big the image is within the picture div. Okay, so... Um, how would you specify the image being at a hundred, like say a ninety percent um, relative to the actual pixels of the picture? You don't. Okay. The, the question was, how would you make it ninety percent of the of the three hundred? something by 221 pixels. You'd have to go in and do the math and make it that big in pixel, 